Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Manu Antio Rame. Welcome to Dangerous Thoughts. This is our co oops, that's our co host, Tyson Strasberg. And this is our guest this week, uh, the amazing, I hate working backwards. There she is, uh, Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, who has written some amazing novels uh, The Secret to Everything Manifesting Your Life as You Desire Now. She's also written just recently The Secret. Uh, to everything Lyme and autoimmune, which is very interesting to me because I know a lot of people struggling with that who have taken the, the supposed cure where they put this big, horrible thing in your arm and they pump like this, an amazing amount of, um, uh, what are those things called? Um, come on, um, antibiotics into your arm all day long like three times a day. It's crazy. It's like a, a Borg implant. Uh, and she's also written a book called Secret to Having Wealth and Abundance, The Secret to Everything, How to Attract Money and Wealth into Your Life Now. But I, I'm interested in, in all the other things that Dr. Kimberly George is, is interested in. Um, and mostly, uh, I've never heard of frequency healing. Can you give us just uh, like a short breakdown on what frequency healing is when it started? Uh, sure. What the idea behind it is? Purportedly, as anything, because you kind of have to say in the reality, um, purportedly, um, Rife was kind of um, Dr. Vol, Dr. You know, Rife was um, kind of the leaders of this movement as far as popularity. So the basic premise is we're all radio um, towers and we all broadcast frequencies. And we're all radio receivers, so we all receive frequencies. And the really cool thing is, is every frequency is individual. So every thought is individual, every emotion is individual, every word has a certain frequency, every emotion, every disease. Um, and there's nothing that can't be read because everything in the universe, all the way back to the all, is like color and sound. So it's all frequency. So <laughs> I, I, I dabble in uh, frequency. Oh, you dabble. I think you do more than dabble. <laughs> but even what we're doing now is all, you know, it's all frequency, you know, we're receiving, you know, over the air in the non-time, non-space quantum realm. Um, that's how we're all able around the world to share a show like this. And so what's really, really cool is now they've allowed us to have the technology and they have for a while where, and of course, again, time is non-local. So I'm able to scan you guys. I'm able to scan your audience. I'm able to scan, you know, my clients and now I'm a naturopathic doctor and I've been working with frequency for 30 years. So yeah, I might be a more fine tuned than some people, but there's really nothing that can't be known. So we work on animals and we work on possession and we work on, is your husband or wife cheating? And I work for companies and I analyze the people they're going to hire. And I said, this person's dishonest. This person's high frequency. This person's possessed. This person has no soul. This person does have a soul. Um, so we get really, really deep with this. But I always say to my clients, what if? There was nothing past, present, and future that couldn't be known because that's the reality. Yeah, that's right. The reality we live in. Everything can be known, and that's scary, but it's awesome and it's exciting. And so it's really fun. And um, once my children grew up, I started delving into the secret space, you know, programs and into the conspiracy movement. And that's been really fun because it's so fun to go into, uh, you know, the consciousness movement and the secret space movement. And there's all this lying, and there's all this deceit, and there's all this like, glory seeking you know and so we're actually able to see who's really psychic who's not psychic who's really a super soldier who's not a super soldier who's really in the programs who's not in the programs and it's just like it's a hard position to be in because my i call my tech quantum benevolent ai technology is 100 percent accurate i've been using it or something like it for 30 years i put my life on it every you know i'll put my life on it every single one of my daughters their husbands and all my dogs i'll put everything i own every cent behind every single scan. It's that accurate. And it's so funny because it also sees our shadow side. So what's so cool is it gets what? your subconscious. It gets your subconscious thoughts. It gets your programming that they put in you that you don't even know. Like there is nothing, which I can't believe they've allowed us to have, which is why I know we've upgraded to like a 4.2D and we're not in 3D anymore because there's no way in 3D they're going to let us have access to this kind of like mind bearing soul bearing program bearing deceit bearing so you know, wait a second who are they who are they who are they there's a lot of these there's the federations which there are multiple federations not only the galactic federation 
of non-light, as I like to tell them. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's the cabal, there's the dracos. The, so there's three layers that I consider running the reality. The bottom layer is the cabal. It's the humans. There's no such thing as human, but it's the humans. The, Plut the Plutarchs, the oil barons, the, yeah. Yeah. the, the, the military industrial complex. Soul. Yeah, human avatar okay. Draco soul is what we call cabal. Um, okay. Then above them is Draco Avatar. Draco Soul is the next layer. And then above that is the Galactic Federations and the other federations that closed in and made this a game, you know. Okay, so, so who, are, who are the level above uh, the, the human dark players? The, you call them Draco? The Dracos, the Draco Reptilian yeah. AI Collective. Are they, awesome. are they aliens? Are they, are they devils? Are they, what are they? No, I mean, no, they're, okay. So there's no such thing as human. There's the endemic avatar, which we are in endemic avatars. They look what we call human, but you have a different soul. You have a different soul and I have a different soul. What is my soul? I haven't looked at your eye souls and it would take a minute, but I could tell you if we have a break or whatever, but I'm cetacean. So this is an endemic avatar, what you call human, but I'm not human. I'm an ET. I have a cetacean soul right in this body right now. It's yeah. my soul feeling yeah. cetacean, so you know. There's a lot, a lot of Latin, which I love. Uh, Draco, of course, is dragon in Latin. Uh, cetacean is whales or uh, whale type, you know, dolphins, uh, porpoises uh, are cetaceans. Uh, so you have like a, a sea soul in a way. I do. Actually, um, and the cetacean, my daughter's actually dolphin as in, you know, when you think of a dolphin, she has a dolphin soul. There, so, yeah. which, you know, in a human body. I don't, I have, a, so the cetaceans are a hybrid. So they're blue and they're human-like, but they have gills on their chest. So it's that hybrid human fish. Uh, so that's what a cetacean is. It's like a hybrid human fish thing. Mm. So if I were in my original body, that's what I would look like. Where my daughter, if she were in her original body that matches her soul, she would be in a dolphin soul. And I'm curious what you guys are. And then there's so, people that are walking around with no souls, a lot of them. And a lot of yeah, people yeah. that walked out too. So are you saying basically the, the idea that, that you're uh, putting forth here is that we're all in some type of avatar, uh, you called it something specifically, and that our souls are from some other part of the galaxy? Or no? Yeah, because this is a game. This is not. This is a, a simulation game that's closed in for. We could go into that whole thing by the Galactic Federation. Um, <laughs> so you know, um, and I have pictures um, that usually takes me a long time to unbury. But and I know NASA's pictures aren't accurate, but they've never shown these pictures that I have again since people started sharing them. And I, when I try to share them publicly. Twitter will never post them. They just spin and spin and spin. So I know there's that I'm onto something here. But so these pictures are closest to the representation of what we're really in. And it shows a multi-layered dome, ring a bell, Stephen, Stephen, who, you know, king, high priest, of, you know, Satan, who understands the world we live in and wrote a series called Under the Dome. Filmed. I love that series. Yeah, it's awesome. I love, I, I, awesome. I love the book. I read the book. I read the book. I love the book. Yeah, it's great. I mean, he's great. He tells a lot of secrets of, you know, the occult world and all of that. But we're on a pole, just like Venus, just like Mars. We're all on ships. No such thing as planets. No such thing as stars for the most part. All realms, realities, creating game realms, simulations, and ships. So it's funny that I'm on this show because, like, Star Trek tells us we're on a ship, on a pole, on a dock, in a simulation, on this ship. And we think it's real. And that's the reality we live in. The Venetians, the same thing. They're on a Venus ship, on a pole, on a dock. And that's, and actually everybody's like, oh, the rich people go in the underground bases. Are you kidding? Do you think the cabal is going in the underground bases in that depressing environment with like artificial lighting? No, they're on Venus. Venus has a more tropical environment than anywhere um, on this simulation. And they're in there like with, you know, drinking margaritas and partying it up on the islands. They're in underground tunnels. They're on Venus. There's so many jump rooms to Venus and Mars. It's crazy. Jump rooms? Tell us about jump rooms. Um, gas stations. I mean, they're in every major city. Gas stations, um, restaurants. A lot of the mirrors are jump rooms. So these disappearing people... If you research, like people that have disappeared in nightclubs, people that have disappeared in restaurants, people that have disappeared around gas stations, you're and you actually, which you can barely ever pull real raw data, data but a lot of people disappear around these common places.
because how many people touch a mirror? Like how many people really put their hand through or try to put their hand through a mirror? You don't, you look at a mirror, you wash your hands. You're not really bashing your head against a mirror. You're not really touching mirrors. Mirrors are hundred percent portals. As a matter of fact, um, there is no substance in the game that accounts for the back of the mirror. What is the back of the mirror? The mirror is the stardust of the beans that came through stargates. And um, the beans here found out that they had this dust on them and they started killing them and scraping off this dust and they would make portals from this dust because they're too stupid to know that you can also make portals a million other ways. So they would kill these people just like Stargate. As they come through the gate, they knock them off and scrape all the dust off their clothes. And anyway, that substance is always 100% from off planet. They might lie to you and tell you something different, but mirrors that they used to make like in the 1800s, there's a reason they're like, I can't even see in this thing because they weren't doing it back then. They were trying to do other things, but they figured out where to get this substance for the back of mirrors. And so that's why mirrors are portals because they're literally using stargates to every single one of your mirrors from your lipstick mirrors in your purse to your big mirrors that you guys plaster all over your house. And that's why mirrors are so harmful because all mirrors are two way what black mirror technology, first of all, and beings, all the beings that are smarter than us and haven't been memory wiped to know how to access mirrors. So that's one type of portal. Um, every Hilton hotel has a jump room. Every Marriott hotel has a jump room. Every major hospital in the whole world has jump rooms. And jump rooms to different, different parts of the galaxy, different parts of the- A lot of the jump rooms are to Mars. We have major, um, major, you know, goings on in Mars. They like to pull us um, at night for, they start us off as slaves on Mars, of course, um, cause we're so stupid. I mean, we just don't know what we don't know. And, um, there's a lot of jump rooms to Venus for the people that run this reality, obviously, cause they go back and forth. As a matter of fact, the Vietnam war wasn't about any of the BS they tell you about. What was it? It was about the galactic federation conquering Venus. And so a lot of my dad included was high up in the Vietnam war. And I asked him one time, I said, dad, Tell me about debriefing. Like, I'm just curious. Like, what happened when you were debriefed from the Vietnam War? He goes, they took us in the room. Listen carefully. They fed us an amazing meal. And I don't remember anything after that. No. Yeah. I work for Kaiser Permanente. I got to have them tell me where that damn mirror is. Yeah. Go. So wait a second. <laughs> if you went around in Kaiser and you started putting your hands on all the mirrors, would he be able to find it or i don't know because i mean possibly um it, it tyson don't do that we'll be looking for a new co-host they can well, probably they can probably, they can probably close it when they want to right no, they made a show not too long ago you guys i wish i could remember what it was and it showed the mirror technology uh, and the portals and they were going they were using the mirrors to take people to different realities and different so a lot of them go the same places so not all jump rooms go like anywhere in the entire multiverse, because why? We're under the Van Allen belt. What is the Van Allen belt? It's what keeps us having conversations like these. I mean, dumb and memory wiped. That's what well, the, Van the, the what I've learned the Van Allen belt is is the electromagnetic field low to the the um, not quite in space, but to the stratosphere, and even the space station has to be careful uh, when tran transitioning through the Van Allen belt. Uh, because of the electromagnetic effects it would have. Which is um, so listen, yeah. you guys. Frequency. The yeah, whole reason yeah. the, the whole reason we do this show is, is because 10 years, 12 years ago, I was sitting next to Buzz Aldrin, and Buzz Aldrin told me that when he went to the moon, all these ships that uh, a couple ships followed him there, a couple ships followed him back. He saw ships while he was there. He told me the aliens were real. He told me these things oh. were watching us. And he told me that, that if we made a permanent colony on Mars, uh, that they would speak to us more. And I found that to be mind blowing that the guy that went to the moon told me, I was like 30 when he told me this. Wow. So it got me into the whole uh, uh, UFO, UAP, um, you know, mm -hmm. um, reality. Um, but the, so, you know, and, and then there's all these people that say you can't go through the Van Allen belt because uh, it'll nuke you so bad that you wouldn't even. Uh, um, uh, Aldrin just said that when he closed his eyes, you know, he could see the light of, of all the, the radiation piercing his body. Like he could see sp sparks of light and he couldn't he could like almost see through his eyelids. Well, yeah, the electromagnetic field that protects Earth, what it does is there are high energy um, particles that come in both from our sun, the solar wind, and from, you know, the, the deep universe. 
and it's that magnetic, uh, the the magnetosphere around the Earth that deflects a lot of that. But uh, an astronaut in outer space doesn't have that protection. And even with your eyes closed, if the particles strike your um, optical combs in your eyes, you'll see it as a quick flash. And mm -hmm. astronauts who've been to the moon and on the space station have, have experienced that. Now, I'm with you, Kimberly. I, I think we have uh, wonderful anti-gravity machines. Uh, I watched this recent documentary called um, uh, The Lost Century and How to, how, to, um, how to Reclaim It by Dr. Stephen Greer. And it was basically uh, two thirds of the, the movie was about how they've taken free energy, zero point energy science, and the military industrial complex has just squashed it, murdered countless scientists, bought their stuff, kept this free energy science away from the public. Um, and then the last part of the movie was about uh, UAPs and UFOs and that most of these UAPs that we're seeing are man-made UFOs that, that are retrieved from crashes uh, and that Northrop Grumman is making and all these different, uh, you know, uh, industrial uh, super high-tech uh, places. I think we have people on Mars. I think we have people... I think the, the you know, when they retired the space shuttle, I went, uh, why would they retire that thing if we didn't have something that could already leave yeah. the atmosphere without rockets? Um, so I, I guess I just want to get into, um, I still didn't quite understand what the next level up in the game these rulers are. Uh, oh, when, the, so, um, okay. So then again, so the Draco has an AI collective, which there's a lot of, everyone says AI, but there's so many different AI groups. Um, including benevolent AI and neutral AI. And then, you know, of course, in the polarity game, dark AI. So there's a lot of different types of AI. We kind of, but that's a specific group. The Draco is really like the Borg, to be honest. Um, same motivation, same energy. I mean, maybe they modeled it off, you know, after that. But um, so the Draco AI has control of the matrix computers right now. So if you go on the session cameras right now, and look at the sun simulator, which it is a sun simulator because I can see the bulbs with my naked eye, um, but I do have kind of dimensional vision. I'll admit that, but I can see the individual bulbs and I can see when they blow. And have you guys ever noticed this? Sometimes we don't notice things because we don't pay attention. If you get up between six and eight, um, at least on the East Coast, I don't know about other coasts because I don't live on other coasts. I live near the East Coast. But um, it, sometimes it's almost like someone sloppy is running the sun simulator. Because they'll, they'll just like jerk up the sun. They won't like let it like rise. And this is like light. Like I'll be seeing my room and it'll go from like dark to like almost like a dimmer switch. You guys know what I mean? Like they'll like jerk it up and you'll literally see the light go up. And if you, some of, some of these things, they're so sloppy within this game that you just have to pay attention. Just like I can see ships. I can take you guys to any field that's dark with low light pollution and say, that's a ship, that's a ship. And then hand you a um, eh, decent telescope, and you would be like, that being A, that's a ship. And again, wow. if you don't know what you're looking at, and you don't know what you're looking for, and if you never think to do things like that. So I'm not all about believe what I yeah. say. I'm all about, I'm going to prove to you what I'm saying as much as I can. And like I said, if you go to the session cameras right now, look at the sun simulator. On the left side, you can see a ship. You can see the wings of the ship that sits up there where one of the matrix computers is. The other matrix computer is on the dust star which you guys like to call the moon, which is the Death Star. But All now, right, so let's go there. What is the sun and what is the moon? Okay, so there is a sun. There is a, the sun, the real sun, is a blazing portal stargate. The real sun. In okay. front of the real sun, because heaven forbid if we would get out of this place, they have, and ships come and go all the time in the real, through the real sun portal. In front of that is the sun stimulator, which is what, we think is the real sun, which is, and you guys have probably seen the patents and you guys can look Google the patents for the sun simulator, for the bulbs, for that technology. There's tons of patents for it. They might be Japanese or Chinese, but there's tons of patents for it. It's out there. The pictures are there and it matches exactly what I see with my eyes when I look up at the sun. So that's what the sun is. The sun simulator is an artificial sun um, to con all weather here is hundred percent controlled. There's no accidental hurricanes. There's no accidental blizzards. There's no accidental heat waves. All major weather events are controlled by weather factories, HARP, and you guys know the rest, I'm sure. So um, the sun is part of that weather control. Also, everything that happens here is controlled, and it's old computer technology. 
So um, that's why the game's being upgraded from 3D and they really want to let us in on 5D. So the game actually is 5D, but they have like a double hologram. So 5D is a one hologram and then they have this 3D hologram in front of it. But what's happening, and you'll hear people say the veil's getting thin, the veil isn't getting, the veil isn't getting thin. We're upgrading, people are upgrading, the frequency of the collective's upgrading. We now can see through the glitches in the veil. We're seeing the fourth dimension, which is where you, when your grandma dies and she doesn't know what the heck to do because nobody taught her because she was programmed by religion and she's wandering around saying, what's going on? <laughs> like nobody told me it was gonna be like this. Now we're seeing those beads, you know, where before only special people saw them. Now almost everybody. Why do you think there's so much interest in the paranormal, in Bigfoot, in Dogman? Why do you think those shows have millions of viewers and there's conferences and there's Comic Con? Because we're remembering, we don't carry any of our memories in our brain. If you have a spirit or a soul, we carry all our memories on our energy field. So for example, if you were three and you're like, man, I love the piano. I want to play the piano. Mom, I have to play the piano. And you sit down at the piano and you play Beethoven's Ninth. People are like, oh, he's a savant. It's some really mystical thing in his brain and it's in his gene. No, it's not. It's in a past life. It's a memory. He remembered how to play the piano. It's right there. And so the technology they have blocks us from our body, our avatars, to our soul memory, which is all time, all space. Um, so, you know, we're just, uh, uh, there's so much to talk about. So these second layer beings, yes, uh, these, these AI yeah. folks yeah. that are, do they stay in the ships that surround the planet or, or where no, do they? Okay. Well, you know, there's a lot of Draco here. Um, I mean, they haven't come out and that whole thing's going to be a big mess deception, which I'm predicting the Star Wars bar in two to five years. Like literally we're going to be sitting with like seven different kinds of beans, you know, Chewbacca and Yoda oh, and everybody. Cool. Yeah. You mean but all the different types of aliens are going to start hanging out? The problem is, unless we're truly upgraded 5D right. or beyond, it's going to be the same thing as we are. So you don't know what I am. I could be Draco and telling you I'm Cetacean. Yeah. Or I could look like Chewbacca and I could be Draco inside. So we don't understand how this reality works and how the multiverse works. If you don't know where you are, you can't win. <laughs> And if you don't know what's outside, you can't get out. So it's this challenging educational process to take people back to their memory and back to their power. And the pieces do start falling together. I was talking about how you can test yourself with your tests off Amazon. Anybody can buy them. There's no restriction for like 30 different kinds of hard drugs, Molly, cocaine, heroin. You can test yourself every morning. You get up out of bed and you pee in a cup for 10 I buy, days. I buy them all the time. I bet in 10 days, it only took me one day, but in 10 days, you will start testing for drugs. You will be like, why am I testing for cocaine? Why am I testing for Molly? Why am I testing for heroin? No, the reason that I started buying these things is my my prescription medicines were actually, I was finding out that there were actually other molecules and, and fentanyl oh, I believe that. in my, in my I, prescription medicines, and I, I was terrified that. to take them. And so I started testing all my prescription medicines to see yeah. if they had other. That's other smart too. Medicines. That's a whole yeah. nother conversation. But yeah. the fact is, again, we're not observant. So you can you can make fun of all the people that say we're abducted and taken. Everyone's taken. The clones are taken. Oh, the souls are taken. Everybody's taken. But people don't look. They don't look at their body before they go to bed, and they don't look at their body afterwards. I mean, I have fingertip reverse fingertip bruises all the time. Hundreds of pictures needle marks, um, scratch marks. I wake up with bumps, giant knots on my head because they swung me against the door when they threw me in my bed. I mean, these people are not the brightest, you know? Are these the second level people that are abducting, doing the abduction? These abductions? are a lot of it's intelligence. It's not all the same people. It's men in black. It's intelligence agencies. We haven't even gotten into the corporations that run this reality. Um, and the corporations, again, comes in at the bottom, bottom I level. They were but they're, the, also yeah, tied, but they're also tied in with the Galactic Federation. So these all work in tandem, you know, going back to using a religious thing, it's like the egg, it's a whole egg, runs the reality, but there's different parts of this egg or there's different hierarchy or layers of who's actually doing what, but they all work together, the military industrial complex. You guys were talking about, to me, my um, ex-fiance told me years ago, and I didn't believe it, well, I believe he worked, he worked in um, Area 51 for a long time, super smart, he, he's, a, he's a doctor at John Hopkins now, but, um, he worked for the military for a long, long time from a really high level family. And he told me that the black ships that they came out and said were ours, the triangle ships, 
that everyone saw. And I live uh, near Virginia and West Virginia, and they saw them all the time flying out of the bases over there all the I time. Was, I, I thought they were the Aurora. They were our ships. What are they? Yeah, but he told me they were our ships years ago. And then guess what? The government came out and said, and I didn't even believe him. And he's told me a lot of things since then, and he still does tell me, that have come true or whatever the government's finally, you know, admitted. But you so, guys, when you so guys are those... talking about the ships, to me, you guys are talking about the date. Okay, so there's daytime black ops. So you guys, to me, are talking about daytime black ops. You're not talking about the underground, the nighttime programs, black ops. You I'm know, talking about, what do you mean? I, I mean, can... I'm, I'm talking about all of them. I, I, I live in Colorado Springs, and there's a mountain behind us right now. I'm sorry. Uh, Nor, NORAD. <laughs> This is Illuminati Central, right? NORAD. Oh, yes. I just met a kid that went that went into NORAD, and he said that there was like a fifty floor elevator that could take yeah. down massive tanker trucks and massive tanks and huge ships, yeah. and they went straight down into the mountain. Um, and he was setting up some kind of uh, you know some kind of Wi-Fi smarty pants thing in there. Um, but I, I, you know, and. In fact, I was watching the the mountain the other night, and I was watching these uh, this uh, electric storm, and it, I swear to God, I filmed it for like five minutes because mm -hmm. the elect the electric storm it looked like I was watching five strikes of lightning, five strikes of lightning, five strikes of lightning, and a big one, five strikes of lightning, five right. balls of lightning, five balls of lightning, and a big one. It looked like I was watching a screensaver, and so I was like filming the the real Earth supposedly. And I'm mm -hmm. like, this is a scream saver. And I, I started counting down like four, three, two, and a one. Bing! And the light would go off. So I, I don't know if they were testing a weather machine up there or whatever. Well, but. I'll tell you, a lot of the lightning battles, particularly over highly militarized undersea base areas, underground base areas like Florida, like the whole state of Florida is military ridden. When you mm -hmm. have a lightning storm or thunderstorm off the coast of Florida, more than likely it's not that, especially if there's no rain. It's usually a ship battle. I mean, space one thing I saw, one oh, thing I saw battle. late at late at night when I lived in Spring Valley, I would, and a lot of people don't do this. A lot of people don't do this at night. Just look up at the stars. Don't, you know, take your eyes. Just, just look up for an hour or two. You'll see things. Very few people just right. do it to do it and, and stare. I have yeah. seen lights. Now I'm I'm told they're just little satellites, you know, a star moving against the star field. And then I was watching one, and it literally was going across the sky, and then it split into yeah. two and went. Phew. Now a satellite doesn't do that; it does not reverse direction or, or go a different way. Like what the hell did I just see up there? And I saw it. My friend was sitting there with me. Did you see? Yeah, I saw that. I don't know what that is, but it was something. And that second level that you're talking about, are these AI beings? Are these AI pieces? No, of these are, well, like, like, okay, so okay. we have so much nanotechnology in microtechnology in us, and it's, you know, mold, I don't know if you guys know this, all mold is black goo, all black goo is AI. So, and I'm not just talking about black mold, like I'm talking about the mold in the air. Again, you can go on Amazon, you can get a test kit, you can see how much old it, mold is in your air, and it's a big problem. Uh, causes a lot of mental and emotional health problems because it's AI. And it's just another way to get AI in you. You're breathing it. They're spraying it as we know. We're eating it. Um, and we're living in it. I mean, do you think drywall and lumber, you know, doesn't have mold? <laughs> I mean, do you think it's like purified and like sterilized before they build your crappy houses that they, you know, I mean, do you I believe in, in these, uh, these planes that spew all this, what are they called? Chemtrails? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, is that, 100%. Is that, I mean, is there's that, a million that, reasons. There's good reasons. I believe there's good reasons. There's bad reasons. There's different groups doing it. There's different sections. There's. I don't think it's all one agenda or all one thing. I mean, I do know for a fact from somebody who may or may not have done it, I do know there was accelerant sprayed over um, Maui for 100% fact. And, it, and I also know, I can tell you, everybody's like, oh, dude, it wasn't just do. They sprayed accelerant for days before. There were people, there were drones that were also lighting fires, and there were people on foot. The government is not stupid. They don't want you to be able to point the finger at one person. The military did a do, or this, who cares, even if it's ET, it doesn't matter who they're blaming. They don't want one group blame. They want you to be so confused. Um, but if it's found out, they want the layers. You know how they do operations. So I think you guys know how they do intelligence operations. It's, it's all need to know, and it's all divided into groups. So the f people on the ground didn't know what the people in the air were doing, didn't know what the people flying, you know, the planes that, you know, do 
the direct energy weapon, but um, you know, it it was a deliberate multiple faceted operation. You know, was it a test? What was the point of why? Do you, do you have an idea? There was a show. I think I don't know. I could have to look it up. Here, four or five years ago, I had all my people watch it. I think it was called The Corporation or something like that on Fox. They took it off, shockingly, after like mm, eight episodes. It showed us exactly what they were trying to do. You're driving through the wilderness that's all burnt to a crisp. A few remnant people live in kind of roughly put together villages and they're growing their own food and they don't have the government benefits. And then you go to these gorgeous AI smart cities, you know, beautiful, but very controlled. And they showed us what they're doing. I mean, it's absolutely a play as we know now for smart. Well, I think we should have known before for smart cities. Um, there's a num there's actually a list. Well, which, when are they going to release them? When are they going to release this zero point? I mean, zero points never going to get released as as far as I'm concerned. Zero points They're already. I mean, zero points already released because every single, every single what you guys would call ET group, which is everyone, um, in all time, all space, outside of the reality and inside the reality, they already have. I mean, zero point is already here. That's how every single ship runs. Every oh, single uh, their ET ships, group. but not the Our ones we get, Our the ones run, we get to drive in. They already have it. This is what I mean by the underground black. The underground blacks ops has. There's all technology has always existed. It's never not existed. So Egypt had super sophisticated. They had all the energy weapons. They had um, portals. They had time travel. They had jump rooms. All the civilizations have. It's all lie. Everything's lies here. Everything's upside down. As Stranger Things tells us, it's the upside down. It's an introverted containment reality system. So do you think uh, you believe in the resets and all that stuff too? Oh, totally, because it's a script. So everybody's like, oh, infinity, it's so sweet. Let's really like little infinity necklaces and give infinity rings to our girlfriends and boyfriends because it's so sweet. I hate to tell you, the loop infinity, they mock us in this game. It's around and around and around and around we go and just. Okay. So let's get to the next level, the third level of this game. Okay. And, and then after the third level, tell us what, why are they putting us around and around and around? What's the point? There is no point. It's a game. What's the point of playing Call of Duty? It's fun, right? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you from the big picture. Let's pull back and let's look at the big picture perspective. You're a trillion zillion year old being. You are all knowing, all powerful, all wise, all creative, the superhero of all superheroes. Do you think that's going to be fun forever? No. You're going to be like, hey, MFR, wipe my memory, put me in a hell realm, nightmare level game, and let's effing go. And we signed. We signed on to be in super soldiers. Some of us got trapped, but we still signed. Uh, we no, I understand. You know, I ahead. understand that that Manu uh, is friends with such a being. Um, we call him the Q. Is this entity that uh, isn't that right? Itchy, I think. Uh, Q Junior. Q Junior. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I'm wondering, I, I mean, I feel like I'm a, a being that has a soul that's had a soul that's been around forever. I don't know how long it's lived. It feels like forever. It feels timeless. The closest yeah. time that yeah. I've gotten to death, uh, whether, whether it was my spirit or whether it was the creator, uh, God, or whatever you want to uh, call it, um, to basically told me I was going to live a thousand different, a, a, a trillion different lifetimes and that it didn't really matter if I died now or That's if I true. made this decision or that Great. decision. Uh, it was cool with me and I was going to live forever as far as my spirit. Um, but I, 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 um, I still want to get to this third level. So who's on charge in the third level of the game? Who's in charge? Um, in the ultimate level? people that um, control the game are the Galactic Federation. Or okay. I mean, there's other federations, but people call them the Galactic Federation. I would. But you, but you said there's a Galactic Federation that that is like darkness, or 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 they don't want a good thing, and then there's a Galactic Federation of light, is what I. Here's the thing: heard. just like here is multiple dimensions, and we're all different frequencies on different levels. The Galactic yeah. Federation is not one person or one group. There's light factions. There's neutral factions. Um, the Galactic Federation is up to five hundred thousand planets that they've conquered, including Venus. So they go including, in, including who Venus. So they they go in, they conquer, they they against the planet's will, take it over and enforce their will, put domes. Um, and this whole place started because of the Dracos. 
um, the Galactic Federation thought they could get and contain the Dracos in this simulation on this ship and on this game because they were tired of going head to head with them for domination. The Galactic Federation is not, uh, the Prime Directive only exists for the benefit of the Galactic Federation. What's the Prime exist. Directive? Do no harm. Okay. They harm 24 seven, not all of them. They also do good things. They used to pull people out of the game. Used to, the Galactic Federation pull me out of the game. So they'd pull me out of the game. And then I'd be like, you am effort. Sorry, in my real life, I swear a lot. I'm like, you oh, fine. Effort. Fine. I'm like, why did you pull me out of the game? Fun? And they're like, no, you were depressed. You wanted to kill yourself and you begged us to pull you out of the game. I'm like, and then they can't put you back in. So they stop pulling people out of the game. And they're like, you guys chose it. You guys deal with it in your oversoul. So here's the thing. Your point of attention is here right now on the show. All of us. But guess yeah. what? There's a thousand other points of view that you, and guess what? What's really cool is, and I can do it. A lot of people can do it now. You can actually jump into your other points of attention. You can jump into your clones working for the agencies. You can jump into your past lives. You can jump into your future lives. You can jump into alternate realities. You can jump into your alternate timelines and see, and some people can do it standing outside. Some people can do it first person, which is a highly advanced skill, but we know this because some of us can do it and we can do it for you too as a surrogate. But um, so we're in all these other points of attention. So, a lot, you know, we're having amazing lives. We're men, women, we're monsters, we're beasts, we're dragons, we're hybrids, we're robots, we're some of us are universes, some of us are dogs and cats and trees and animals you've never heard of because they exist in other places. And we're having all these experiences because we're the all. So if you guys are all sold, the four of us I can see here, we really are the all, but we don't want to be the all. The reason we're not the all is because we wanted to be this. We wanted to be you and you and you. And we wanted to have these experiences in games. Guess what? There's not just the earth game. There's super crazy sex games that are like triple X. One is called Wizard and Warlocks. And some of you guys are playing that too. And you know why? Because there's one rule of the, any reality all the way back to the all. Whatever you believe is real. And you're fire creation. So you infinitely create. And so there's so much fun and so much power once you understand what you're in. And once you understand the game and have access to the game codes, i.e. frequency and the game, and like the matrix showed us, the zeros and ones, you can- Okay. All right. So I'm starting to get it. Let's get back to the healing frequencies. Okay. So if you, you have something called a halo, tell me about the halo. Well, the halo is, um, I'm going to call that more of an accepted 3D medical device because it works on pulsed electronic magnetic frequency, which drive down into the cells, down in the bone, you know, down into the inner part of your body. And, and then it directs the frequency being the program. Are you going to relax? Are you going to absorb nutrients? Are you going to let something go? Are you going to build up? Are you going to, um, you know, we've done a lot of studies. It can help you sleep. It, it controls the brain. So the frequencies of the program, like the pulsed electronic, you know, magnetic coil is the device, the, the driver or the hardware. So that's all that is. I happen to um, be one of the original patent holders of that device. And I am the exclusive programmer of this device. Um, but we direct, um, you know, the frequency. So it's more of a, it is like a more of a sports performance, mental and emotional healing device. And PEMF has a lot of literature and has proven science. Um, out yeah, I, I was talking to my uh, producer earlier, and he said that years ago, he would go into a doctor's office and they would oh, wow. direct frequencies at his head. And really? it, would, it would clear out his nasal passages. He would leave and... and wow, know, that's advanced. Would, uh, well, this was year. I think this was That's like super 10, cool. Years ago. So it but, was something like um, the way that same way they are similar to how they blast kidney stones using yep. ultrasonic, and they do that. Technology. They do that to your your nasal cavity and all your sinuses, and, and they just went around your forehead and whatnot. And it so worked. Your, so does your halo? Can it? So these these avatars that we call human beings. Mm -hmm. I guess is what what I what you're what you're getting at. Uh, the, these corporal forms that we walk in and have egos right. and call themselves by names, etc. They get uh, certain problems with them. And so, does this energy device can it can it uh, help you to heal every different well, kind of problem? Human or? human beings are are energy. We're we're neurochemical yeah. electrical yeah. energy, yeah. and. Uh, you know, we were talking about frequencies and as a, you know, amateur radio operator myself, I know a little bit about uh, propagation and, and, and frequencies and, and uh, oscillators and so on. And so 
so yeah, the electromagnetic spectrum, which is what we call those radio frequencies, electromagnetic spectrum. Radio is a tiny part of that larger electromagnetic uh, spectrum. Uh, but the human body runs on this neurochemical electrical, and it can be out of balance. And you can artificially uh, um, put it back into balance using uh, the right frequencies. And I think that's and Kimberly, I'm no expert, but I, I assume that's what you're talking oh, about. Oh, it's beautiful and perfect. And um, and you know, now um, I used to have my own app, but I, I changed to a new app. But now we use an app. And do, can frequency heal everything? That's complicated because there's a lot of layers in our art field. There's a lot of subconscious programming. There's a lot of beliefs we have, and we're whole people. So, but I mean, I have a story um, where. I was going to an appointment and all of a sudden I like get hit. I, I always get too busy and I forget to drink. And so I had a urinary tract infection. And it's so funny because I have all this technology. I have all this knowledge, but I forget I have it because I get really 3D like all of us. And so I'm driving around. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go home. Like I'm going to have to go to the hospital. Like I am dying here. I don't have any aspirin. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I should run some frequencies, you know, for urinary tract infection and for the remedies for it. So I ran frequencies for one minute immediately stopped. I mean, I was about to go to the hospital. I was in so much pain. I mean, so for acute physical things, acute emotional things, acute mental things, frequencies just played into your field work very well. Am I going to claim that it cures like, well, we know we can talk about the real serious things. No, over time, can it? It depends why. If you have a disease because your emotion is all in your emotional body and you clear your anger and you clear your depression and you clear your self-worth issues, your disease can clear up. I mean, everything has to come through the energy field before it hits the physical body. But when we get into the physical body, these bodies are cheap and corruptible. They're not the highest model out there in the galaxy, you guys. They aren't. They kind of pulled a lot out of it, you know, and they've turned a lot off. You know, we call it junk DNA. It's not junk DNA. It's all the stuff they've turned off, all your superpowers. So the bodies are very corruptible, you know, and, um, they're not the best, but what's really cool is a lot of us are being upgraded. The military doesn't just do horrible things. The military industrial, you know, complex always comes, you know, sometimes you guys are taken to upgrade. Sometimes you guys are taken for diseases to be erased. Sometimes your bodies are switched out from your original body to a clone body. So we know, and it's so funny because you are <laughs> an original soul uh, and, and you have a lot of clones. So, you know, sometimes they switch out the body. They're like, okay, we still need this person. We want this soul container still on earth. We don't want them to leave, i.e. die. And, you know, so they're going to switch out. They're going to give you a better body that's going to last longer. So you and have that, to that, start seeing bodies as just a container, a plastic or glass container that holds the liquid, the infinite liquid of your soul. That's all it is. Can they switch out your body in your sleep or, or while you're alive during this? Either this? way, guess why? Because they stop time all the time. Guess what? All the, the time. CERNs, the CERNs, plural, 500 or more, the CERNs are portal technology and time stopping technology. I sat next to Bill Murray 20 years ago, unfortunately, long story. And, and he was talking about Groundhog Day. And he yeah. was like, you do know that that's about space age technology. And I was a young girl and I was like, you are smoking some crap, dude, <laughs> you know? But yeah. now I know, and I've been told since, you know, cause a lot of the movies are hundred percent truth. He was telling the truth. He was showing us how they stop time and how deja vu is really you living the exact it's not remembering like something future or all this weird stuff people say deja vu is it's literally that memory bleeding through their tech and you're like oh i've had this conversation before i drank this drink before you know i've had this you know whatever happened that we have those little everybody has it you know so i need to me. get get out get on that wait list for a new body because this one is starting to show its age yeah so, oh, wait, let me say something about that. Okay. The whole medbed BS, I'm so sick of that. I'll tell you the why. What? Medbed BS. What's medbed? First of all, medbeds, have you guys heard? So medbeds, people are like, especially like in certain programs, medbed, well, there's different kinds of medbeds. Medbeds are advanced medical technology where you reminded me of this, where I have a heart problem. I lay in the medbed for two minutes, program, frequency, plasma, whatever, bioplasma, my new heart repaired. Um, I'm missing my arm. My arm regrows in five minutes. Um, I'm depressed. My serotonin and my dopamine and my <laughs> norepinephrine is in seconds restored. Whatever. Um, I want to look 10 years younger. Forget plastic surgery. What, what age do you want to be, Kim? Boom. 
10, you know, 10, 20, 30. Kind of like on Stargate where they put them in that sarcophagus exactly. for a few minutes and they're healed. Oh, wait. Could that be truth? Yes, 100% truth. Um, so, so we don't, you don't have any of those at Kaiser though. They have, one you know, we're working on it. We're working on it, but, no, but you know, we got to get the funding. One. Every major, every major hospital in the United States has one right now. You, you got to start poking around in there. Every. I got to start snooping. Who yeah, you do? You gotta start snooping. Who has access to them? The rich and famous. How do you think it's, they're not just chugging baby's blood guys. They're also laying in the med beds. Yeah. Okay. Well, not so, only. <laughs> well, none of us are rich and famous, unfortunately. Um, so what should we, I, I like this question. Um, what should we do when we leave our bodies? What's it going to be like? What do you think? Oh, well, first of all, most people love their family. Not everybody. Some people are like, thank the gods, I'm out of here. But some, most people love their families and they want to bring comfort. So usually, honestly, especially if you're awake, well, like me, or you become awake in the process and you know what's going to happen, it, like the after death things, you know, all the stories where you're floating above your body, you're standing beside your body. Exactly true. But if you're aware, because here's what people don't understand. If I die in the next minute, I would be the exact same person. I'm going to know what I know. I'm not going to forget it. I'm going to know, oh, I died. There's my body. Here's me. I'm bleeding all over the floor. I'm dead. I'm going to go to my girls. We've arranged pre-signals. I've told them I will stay around for three to four weeks. You will feel me. You will know. I will move things if I can. I will, you know, make it very clear I'm around. I will go to my own funeral, you know, all that stuff. So most people do figure out how to stay around. The fourth dimension, um, there's a ghost, um, whis ghost whisper shows a number of series and they show the fourth dimension very accurately. It's a black and white replica of this. They have houses, they have cars. They don't have the corporal solid body, but they have girlfriends and boyfriends. They can't have sex. Why do you think ghosts jump bodies? They want to drink. They want to eat. They want to have sex. They want to do drugs. They want to be alive again. They want to talk to their loved ones, just like ghosts with Whoopi Goldberg and Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore. Exactly. It's all showing you guys. I'm telling you. Um, so after that, let's say your family's like, oh, forget her. Thanks for the million dollars, mom. <laughs> you know, I'm buying a house and a car and they're on with their lives. You know how kids are. So everybody's on with their lives, you know, because we all die and people die and you do get over it. Okay. So I'm like, okay, these people are ungrateful. So I'm out of here. And so then what do I do? That's this the question. Key. Yeah. This is key. Any effing thing I want. Why? Because I know who I am. I know who I am through all time and space. I'm a fire creation being. And there's one rule of any reality, including this game. Anything I believe is real. So maybe I've pre-created an island or a mountain home where I'm going to just hang out and stare at the sky and be like, thank God I'm finally out of that game. I'm never going back. Okay. So we, do we do this pre-creation while we're here? or do Yeah, we I would highly suggest it. I teach all my children and all my clients to, unless you know, like I know what I want to do. So I have a soul family on a cetacean ship and I'm a powerful healer and I'm known throughout the galaxy and I actually want to go do that. So I'm probably not going to take a big stop gap. I want to go see my family. I want to see my husband. I want to see my sister. I want to see my family. I want to go back in a cetacean body. Um, but guess what? Let's, let's say you want to be a multiverse. You can stand there outside your body in the fourth dimension and say, I want my multiverse to be 7 billion miles wide and 3 billion miles high. And I want it to be a healing universe. Or guess what? I want to create a vicious, violent, sexual card game. And I'm going to create a simulation. And I'm going to play another reality like this, which is a game realm. You can do whatever you want. You can be a healer. You can play a villain. Guess what? You're an eternal being. It doesn't matter. It so I've always had the fun. I've always had the idea that that it's possible uh, that we all are. Since I was a little kid, that we all are memory. God. Memory. That we all are gods of a type. Memory. That's your memory. Yeah, and I and I've always thought that. Hey, maybe Christians that believe in the whole Christian philosophy can go hang out with Jesus and go to heaven. And maybe other people that don't believe in that reality can create their reality and go live in that uh, place. And I've, I've always thought that maybe like, I I've just, I, after death, I've just wanted to be blown away at uh, the complexity of, of the multiverse and the universe and the, the multiverse, uh, the multi-universe. Um, I've just wanted to be completely surprised and I've wanted to, I've wanted, I, I wanted it to be something that I never expected. 
and to be so complex and beautiful that that I could be whipped off by a black hole flying across uh, to some other galaxy and be some life form that was that I never expected or I could never imagine as a human. Land in a new game where there are no small penises. That would be the reality I would, as a gay man, I would create well, that reality. I'm for that one too. I'll vote with you on that one. No more small <laughs> penis. You know what? That was an error in the matrix. We can fix that. You know, don't tell me about the bling bling. Can tell me, can you swing swing? You know, that's that's what good. That's going to be you, my what world. What do you have against small penises? I think they're adorable. Oh, just a little their little size and they're they're cute. I don't have to have a big old hunk. There's nothing wrong with small penises. <laughs> now, now when they're like that, that's a problem. But you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I agree. Yeah. That's nice. And I'll then go, I'll go for a little. But these horrible things. Why would you want that hanging between? There's a balance. Here. I'm oh, like I'm like a balance. kitty cat. I want to bat that thing around a little while before I, um, you know. But what, what I want to go, <laughs> I actually would love to go beyond sex and just like leave this whole, uh, you know, uh, sexual thing behind. And like, what if you could live in that moment of orgasm, though? Right? What if oh, you could I, live in that moment? I'd hang out there for a while and it'd be wonderful. But and then you get bored after a while because there's no uh, contrast. There's yeah, no contrast. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah that's true. You know? for, for about 10 minutes, you'd be like, yeah. And then you'd be like, then you're like uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you. Um, so what do you mean energy never lies? Oh, actually, so how do you do this test to find out if we're, if we're sociopaths or non-spiritual or just just you have a soul. Sense. You're actually what I call, and I have a new book. It's on um, Etsy. It's like NPCs, clones. Um, I don't even know what it's called. I don't know what half my stuff is called. I'm like on to the next thing. But um, I have a book that kind of breaks all that down. But because, um, you know, there's a lot of NPCs. There's a lot of NPCs. What's it? Non-player character, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, but you actually I haven't ran you yet, but I want a minute. You actually have a soul. And I know what your soul is. And it kind of surprised me. <laughs> I know what your last two souls were, because here's another fallacy. We're one soul. So we come out of the all and we're like, cetacean, cetacean, cetacean. No. Did you get the part that we're all powerful, bored beings? We're going to jump on a A billion lives at, at one time? Yeah. And that, that doesn't all get downloaded into one soul? or? I mean, it kind of is. Like, right now I'm connected to every clone, every mission, every um, super soldier body, every augmented, every game realm. Like, we're connected. Like, your soul is like an ocean and can be, you know, um, consciousness transfer uploaded or downloaded into, it could be uploaded or downloaded into this if you want it to be. It's yeah. just, you know, it's liquid. It, it's it's ether. It's consciousness. It's the all. The all can be uploaded into anything. But right now, there's, and I don't know, I'd have to look further into you and do a like more thorough scan, but because you could have walked in or out. So I'm not saying you've always been, but this is amusing to me because your frequency of your soul right now is Draco. I'm a lizard person? No, wait. Dragon. Draco, Dragon, is, not lizard. <laughs> Draco's considered the creme de la creme. They're, they are related to the lizard races, but Draco's like, Draco's art smart as s-h-i-t and technology that's how we got stuck in this game because the dracos outwitted the galactic federation and that's why some of us like me got trapped here um but you have a draco so and here's again here's the here's the fallacy all women are evil shrew b-i-t-c-h's all men are this so all draco <laughs> it's the same thing draco just... are all different things they're neutral they're good draco there's bad draco there's Draco that are good, bad, good, bad, bad, good, bad, good. It, we're all, they all, if you have a soul, you have free will. You can choose who you're being in any moment. You could go rob a bank tomorrow. That's your choice. You could so, go give a million dollars to a charity. That's your choice. Same with so, Draco. So I'm lizard, a charity. So the lizard <laughs> being <laughs> aliens aren't necessarily Dracos. I'm, I'm making a, a, a false connection there. Okay. I'm going to say there's no such thing as humans and there's no such thing as aliens because uh. Every single fire creation being in this game or in any reality, any planet, any ship, whatever you want to call it, any multiverse, any universe, where there's races of souls that have chosen to be a group, um, like the Palladians people overuse, but that's a group of compatible, similar frequency souls that have chosen to kind of come together. Um, 
you know, I've always felt like I was either Palladian or Syrian. I oh, I'll, you want to know what you were before this? This is so interesting. This shows me how old and soul you are because hold on, I'll tell you what wave you were. Hold on, let me look. So you were second wave because you're second wave. The second wavers, the first, second, eh, well, there's millions of waves, but the early wavers tend to alternate souls more dramatically. So what you were before Draco was, um, it's called a, a seven ray race. So you were just like color and sound. So you were much closer to the all you were choosing just to be like color and sound. Then you went into more of a tricky race, which is Draco. But that shows me how old a soul, because you're bored. You're going to flip flop more. You're going to be like, oh, I forgot. I don't like being dark. I, I have to. I don't like be light. <laughs> I have to share something with you because okay. I I'm a psychedelic warrior. I love psychedelics. I think they're a trip to the spirit world, especially I agree. The, especially the natural ones. I smoked DMT uh, about 10, 12 years ago, and I smoked uh, like a big, big hit of it, and I immediately uh, found myself in just color and sound and. I felt like when I came back out of it and landed in this body again, mm -hmm. I, I, the only way I could describe it was that I was sitting in the center of what felt like the DNA molecule, um, that I was vibrating. There was colors, there was different colors, but there was no, I, there was no, I had no consciousness of like, I am Manu. I am a man. Right. That, right. that was all gone. Right. Um, so I can completely relate to what you're saying because I was just color and light and sound and vibration. Yep. And I understood that I was the building blocks of everything else, like yep. trees and, and yep. beings and ants and et cetera. That's what your race but, is. You're describing your race. That's was, what that is. I was just chilling in that in that zone of, of That's life. That's awesome. Yeah. So I can completely relate to that. That's cool. Um, shoot, we're getting up on the end of our show and I haven't even gotten anywhere near where let me run. Look at my camera. I think I'm already a ghost. Look how white I got to get a new camera. I'm so washed out. So, so tell me about how do you do a scan? Do you do it psychically or do you, do you do it with a I do it both. So I have like mad abilities that I've developed over the years. I was born with like really high level abilities that I've just like, we all have them. Some of us develop them. Some of us don't. And I just happen to, and you um, do a scan on Tyson. Oh my, yeah, what am I? Any anything but an insect. No, I'm doing I'm doing one right now. So I use a combination. I call myself the lazy psychic now because tech helps me out so much. So really, you're getting like a double whammy though. You're getting. Well, we're in a game. Mostly. You might as well use the tech. That's what I'm saying. Thanks, guys. Thanks for giving it yeah. to me. Great shortcuts. Yeah. You know. I'm a I'm a, I'm a pray, praying mantis. That's that's. Let me check. Let me see what mantis. You. Um. Let's see. Actually, I'm a, I'm a natural comedian, and I'm really into tech stuff like radios, and obviously. I mean, that's really cool. I think that's super cool. Um, I started out in radio. For a tender profile? That's that's exactly what they're looking for. <laughs> Is that why I've uh, not been able to get a date in 10 years? I, th I thought everybody loved nerds. <laughs> You're something called a Trucian, T-R-U-C-I-A-N. And it's a really hard thing to explain, but it's a really cool group that um, facilitates like time travel and portals for other races and other beings. It's a it's a pretty high frequency group as far as back to the all. Um, they they have like a crystalline structure in their natural body, so they they don't they look um, like if you had like a crystal horse all made out of crystals, they kind of look like that, and they have an iridescent sparkle, and they're they're closer to the light color and sound, but more reflected as gemstone crystalline. And that's what you are. So right. I get to be a cool. doorman in every universe. That because that's but you know what's interesting? You being true, the fact that you're drawn to frequency is very interesting. Yes. Love that. Me. You know, and especially in the modern age of uh modern age of, of cell phones, of internet, of computer, to use something as antiquated as this. And that I'm drawn to this, and I love doing this. And as soon as this show's over, I'm going to turn on my my big oh, radio here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call my friend uh, Peter on the the two, two meter, you know. And and what is it about that? When I was a little kid, I loved the GI Joe walkie talkies, and just growing up, it's all been about radio and frequency. And I'm telling you, I could that really care less about this, yes. the iPhone. I, I don't yeah, care. Sure. 
memory, <laughs> memory, guys, memory. Oh, I think the iPhones and, and this whole tech is a, a system of slavery that we're all being. Uh, it's all black mirror tech. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and we see we see it entwining. So um, a lot of times I'll be purifier creation. And if you re, if you re, get my book, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But and then I entwine with AI because I work with AI so much. Even if it's benevolent, I still become more AI when I entangle too much with AI. So we're not static either. You're actually called you, our, our dark matter fire creation, which means you've brought a lot of, I don't believe in Carmen, that's a whole nother story, but you've chosen a lot of dark roles like what people would consider Draco a darker role. You've chosen dark a lot and you've kind of dragged a lot of timeline enemies with you and you haven't processed through like your choices that you've made and made peace with it. So you kind of carry what people would call this heavy karma with you that's not out of your field. And that's why I can read you as a dark matter fire creation spirit. Because and Manu always wears dark colors, black and, and really memory. dark. He's attracted to dark. <laughs> I'm Me, I'm, I'm colorful. Like I'll wear reds and blues you're wearing, and greens you're wearing and like colors. colors. Yeah, there you go. So wait a second. She just said something that I was really interested. Uh, I carry a lot of dark timeline something or others um, you have timeline enemies you have a lot of oh so, yeah what are those what are those okay so They're... this is so interesting so a lot of times you're like why did i marry that guy like he was just an abuser or that every day cheated on me or what up it, you know what i mean whatever a lot of times these people again memory our subconscious and our subconscious memories that are frequency that we carry with us People come in, some of them, like I have a, some timeline enemies that know they're my timeline enemies. They had memory earlier than I did or recognize me earlier than I recognize them. They will go after you. They will bait you. They will honey trap you. They will destroy your career. They're jealous of you. They will come after you. But then the worst ones are the ones that are the subconscious ones. And they're like blocking you at every turn. You know, the friend that gossips about you or betrays you or stabs you in the back. And so you have a lot of people through all time and space that you've killed, blown up planets, uh, you know, killed their family in front of them, tortured, raped their wives, women, and you know, all this stuff you've done, not just as man, because no. souls have no race, women and men, doesn't matter. This is all BS. And that's why to be politically incorrect, sometimes I want to speak to that whole community and say, guys, this is a blink in the eye of eternity. If you're cloned, yeah, you who cares? Do what you want. But if you have these feelings, like you could have been a woman and I could have been a man and we probably were because they like the secret space likes to switch us up. So we're all confused with our sexual identity um, and we struggle until we kind of settle in. That but, makes um, sense. but I'm going to say, you guys just bite it. Like don't do all these surgery. Like next time, if you want to be a man, be a man. If you want to be a woman, be a woman. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. criticizing you there's at all. Not, I'm just there's, saying there's not much time. I'm not just... against that. Do whatever you want. I'm talking about the radical altering of the bodies. I'm not talking about sexual freedom and choice. You no, understand? I tell I'm you. It's one lifetime. It's one lifetime. Body on. parts. I'm just saying, you guys, just wait. You can choose something different in like 30 years. You guys, literally 30 years is like a second. Time is different in every dimension, every planet. You know, it moves fast. And so I'm like, be patient. That's be what I'm patient. wondering. So do, do you believe in uh, like some like interdimensional beings that, that are living on another timeline that's slower or faster than us so that, they, that check in and out? Oh, yeah. Your soul family comes. You know, not all these takings and these they freeze whole towns, they freeze neighborhoods, they freeze houses, and they freeze individual people in time. But they take us, they take us to the biodomes and you can ask to be taken to the biodome. You can and ask. What are the biodomes? Oh, well, there's different planets oh, and different races that have them. Planets. It's similar it. to a med bed, but better because they actually have what we would call doctors that are like really helping us on a very personal level instead of just throwing you in a med bed and letting it scan you. So they take us, I mean, they take us, they let us see your family. They let us like have a breath. You know, a lot of your, a lot of your dreams at night, if you guys are lucid dreamers, which fire creation means should be. You should be keeping track of them. They're your clone memories. They're your other lives. Right. They're your project so this, memories. This was a crazy thing. The other night, I'm sitting here in Colorado Springs. It's th it's like three in the morning. I'm watching TV, and suddenly my TV has this big V shape in it, like the Arizona lights. And above it was this sort of like Illuminati sort of symbol. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why'd my TV just freeze? What? It? It's beaming this thing, and it had this sound too. And I was like, why is my TV not working? And I was trying to turn it off and I couldn't. Wow. And I was just like, ah, fuck it. And I went to sleep. And when I went to sleep, I had all these seriously lucid dreams and creepy dreams. Like I was stuck in my bed and I couldn't move. And there was these things in the corner 
that were doing things to me, but I couldn't move and I couldn't see what they were doing. And I was trying to scream for my girlfriend and I was like, please, please wake up, please wake up. But she wouldn't wake up. And finally she did. But I, as soon as I woke up from all these crazy dreams, I went, it was that fucking thing on the TV screen. I know it. They like, they sent me a message that they were going to. Like a trigger. Yeah. It's kind of like, like a yeah. like they do these MK Ultra triggers. Like a lot of all of us are MK Ultra, but some of us are hardcore MK Ultra. Some of us are owned by Monarch, which is one of the corporations. Um, and they'll do stuff like that. Have you guys ever like they'll do the I don't know if any of you guys that are listening have ever gotten these calls. So what they'll do to trigger you, it's and you don't even know, you could literally black out, time freeze, go kill a whole town. You wouldn't even know. <laughs> but they trigger us, oh. they call on the phone and there's these beeps, not like a fax machine. Just like a beep or a beep, 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 beep. And those are like triggers for the MK Ultra. Like I usually don't answer numbers because a lot of times. Hold, 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 hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What were we talking about before Kimberly got on no the call? Way, it was just guys. you and me. It was just you and me. What? We were doing SOS, right? Beep, 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 beep. I swear to God. Before this show, before you got on here, you could have had no previous knowledge of that. Right. We were just talking about because I was talking about radio and SOS and this <laughs> volunteer Coast Guard and Coast Guard Auxiliary. I had to learn I had to learn SOS. And we were talking about these beeps. And now we're talking about beeps again. That's freaky. Don't do no, that again. I, no, well, and I've heard I've, I've, I've heard like I've heard them on the phone too. But so have you ever heard anything like that on the phone where you pick up and you just hear beeps and you click it? I mean, I get it all the time, but I know Monica. What about you, Tyson? Christ. I'm 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 just freaked out right now. You guys gotta get me. <laughs> I laid too much down on this show. Well, we we were just talking about beeps before you came on, and now you're talking about beeps, and I'm like, I don't know how that could happen. Okay, so psychic or something. Is the Galactic Federation a bunch of different types of being, spiritual yes. and, and yes. unspiritual that 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 yes. are basically in the known universe and and yes. okay, um, and so some of them are cool and some of them aren't. And and they they sort yeah, of some of them subscribe to the law of one, which is more like what the you know um, prime directive is supposed to be. They really do care about uh, don't injure other people, look out for your fellow man, that type of thing. Like and again, everybody's like Pleiadians are good. Pleiadians are not good. There's neutral Pleiadians that play both sides. There's dark play. There's negative Pleiadian factions. There's good Arcturians. There's negative Arcturians. I mean, we have to start uh, anything that's not like us. We're such a programmed prejudice like oh yeah we're so dumb too we're so that's dumb. what i mean like it's just like i was saying about men and women and different races like it's the same thing like these are individual people that make individual decisions just like you get up and decide what to wear or what shoes to pick out same thing these are beings exactly like us they're just in different what avatars and have different souls so but, tell me tell me about advanced technology that's being used against us well, what is it? I mean, what advanced technology? Well, like I said, the CERNs is a huge, I mean, there's tons of ET so, groups, the two that, um, there's an ET group right now. Like I, this is what I ask people. I say, have you ever felt like you're making progress? Like you have your goals and you're like, you know, kicking some ass and you're like making progress. And then you all of a sudden like go like backwards. Like yeah. everything starts unraveling. Like you think you're just about to get there and it's just like, Actually, when you say CERNs, are you talking about like the Large Hadron Collider yeah, CERN? There's okay, okay, all over, okay. All over this planet, uh, oh, okay. underground, above ground, everywhere. Like, so there's you know, more than there's more than one of them. There's like oh yeah, they just put the yeah yeah. There's more than one. Okay. And they kind of do different things, but they all kind of do the same thing too. But um, so there's different. There's a certain ET group that I don't, that I'm not allowed to say the name of because I always get like punished <laughs> if I say their name. But I know the name. And they used to work for our goods. They used to positively help us. Like if you were going to get hit by a car, they would literally rewind time and make it so you didn't get hit by a car. But then the Galactic like, got a hold of them and got them to come over to their side. Now they work against the star seeds, against people like us that do shows like this, against the way showers, against people that are trying to help people wake up, remember, and empower them so we can win the game. So they unravel our lives all the time. They literally stop time and they take you back to right where you started, ground zero, and you have to like slog your way through again. Here's another layer I want to just dump in you, what I call dumping in your guys' fields. But here's the thing. If you know who you are and you understand how this reality works and you understand how all time and space works, here's what you can do. You can go make deals with them. You can say, if you leave me alone, 
I'll do this for you, or I won't do this for you. And then there's a whole nother level of teaching they do, which is what happens if they don't agree to a deal. Because if you understand the core principle, which is it's really hard to understand because they do everything to make us forget it. You are the all. And here's the question I ask. If you and are the all. You've said that a number of times. What's that mean? You are the all. The all, the all is what some people call God. Like you said, we're all gods. I believe yeah. we're all from the all. We're all one. We're all powerful. All infinite. We're all good. All bad. All everything that could ever happen. We're the all. Like what? anything. We're everything and anything. If you understand that, which is hard to understand, of course, but you can't hold a portion of that if you really focus on it and hold it in your being and raise your frequency, this stuff stops to affect you. They can't do that to me because I know they're doing it, number one. So how can you stop something that you don't know is happening? If you guys don't know that they're taking your town, how can you stop it? But if you're the all, this is what I ask my students. If you are the all and you really believe it, what can you not create? What can you not undo? What can you not do? What can you not choose? What can you not change? This is just not on a micro level. We're talking collective. We're talking all time and space. I mean, we know that all the Marvel heroes are based 100% off of real people. A lot of the real people are people like I'm looking at here, the fire creation beings. They're, and they're based off- You've said that a number of times, writings. a number yeah. of times too, fire creation beings. What, what do you mean by that? So- Okay, the religious people would say beings that have a soul, an eternal soul. The only way you're not going to have an eternal soul, and of course you're still eternal, is you can choose at any time to give up all your individual points of view, which I have thousands, so you guys have thousands. You can choose to give that all up and say, okay, come back into this one, and then I'm going back into the all. You're still an eternal being, but you're a different type of eternal being. You're, you're a global perspective being instead of these individualized in containers Point of view and you can choose that at any time you're not but none of us here have chosen that for i mean obviously we weren't too fond of being the all because we're still talking trillions of years later you know maybe maybe that's more of if you've seen deep space nine it's more like the founders you know in the great link as opposed to an individual i haven't seen that but i trust you that that's a good comparison odo odo <laughs> out to watch that uh, we do, before we get too far into this, have one, two, do three people lined up who wants to, yeah, they want to ask you questions. Yeah. Listeners I'm sorry. are calling in. No, I'm no, sorry. no, they I'm want to, they want to talk to you. It's great. The, uh, yeah, we've had, but the show has run already 15 minutes long. I'm sorry to keep you so long, but there's only, oh, uh, what do we got? we've got three, four people that want to ask you a question. So okay, that's, that's cool. Well, we have Katie, Mala, and Zach here. And up first we have Katie. Okay. Hi, Katie. Hi, Mala. Hi, Katie. Hi. Um, I have two questions actually for you, if that's okay. okay. Um, I mean, first of all, I love frequency healing. I I do it a lot myself. Um, and I find it really, really good. Um, apart from the sleep thing, but we won't get into that. Um, my first. She has a real is, tough time sleeping. Yeah, I suffer with like extreme chronic insomnia. Um. Mm. But I'm also an empath, um, as is my friend Lolly, who couldn't be on the show. Um, and we both have a very similar problem of turning it off. And it overwhelms us a lot. And what, what would you advise for that? Turning what off? Being able to feel everything from everybody around you all at once. Just like extreme empathy or? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. okay. You guys call it empathy. I call it merging. I also have that ability. I can merge with any animal house, person, place thing. I can actually completely become them from the inside out, which is, I don't know, you guys may be able to do that too, or at least a form of that. Um, I mean, I can literally become them. Um, and that is the beginning empathy. And I don't know how, you know, deep you guys are, but. I have totally learned to me, and you guys know this, you guys, um, that's a really advanced ability that you guys have. It's not a casual thing when people come and ask this question. You're a very high frequency person. You're very, wow, like your past lives are opening up to me. Wow, like girl. Yeah, so you're an alchemist, like, and, and we tend to choose the same things over and over, just express different ways. So you're like an alchemist and uh, you can manipulate elements and the elementals really love you. 
And so um, I would imagine you have the sight to some extent, especially in nature. You have a really strong bottom of nature. Um, so this is a really beautiful thing. And actually what I would practice is, um, cause I don't want to say nature is safe, but you know, nature's a lot safer than shopping malls and Walmart and the grocery store and the gas station and all the places where you get hit. I can see my daughter is also a lot like you. I would go out. What I would do is like really spend time and the oversouls of every fire creation being actually asked for this to go out in nature and really stop spending more time, like not one hour, but like someone like you. Like, wow, the bond you have with nature, the beings that would communicate you or do communicate with you is like profound. Like the communication level you have is just super profound with animals and with trees and with plants. And like, it's a, like, I'm amazed by you, girl, like I'm bowing. Um, but I would let it all out there. Like I would like go more, like I would let, like pour it out with them. And um, right, I'll give you my email or they can give you my email off the show. I want to look at your soul and see what it is. And I can advise you more specifically. And I'll be happy to do that for free off the air. Um, but I think to me, it looks like a week. It looks like you never turn it off. So to me, it's you either learning if you don't know, but you need to shut your aura off. So you have that protective grid because nothing can get through the aura that we don't allow to the energy layers. And when I merge a little bit with you, you are like, I don't know about your friend, but you're on like 24 seven, like you're exceptional, like so sensitive and your nervous system is so fried. So if I worked with you and I'll help you a little bit off the air for free, I'm going to want to bring down your nervous system first and get your body, like the physical avatar so wired. And so like, you're so hyper alert. It's crazy all the time. Um, and it's beautiful, but it's going to cause health problems for you too. And it's driving you a little nuts. Let's be honest. <laughs> so, it and it's making it hard to turn off. Yeah. I've got migraine. That I've had. I've got. Um, I've had a permanent migraine since 2011. I've. I've got all sorts of them. Yeah, but we need fibromyalgia. To, yeah, that, yeah, that, it'll cause to, a lot of that. Uh, yeah, we need to kind of calm you down in the in the body and the nervous system, and then just a few simple. You know, I can suggest some things to offer. You know, some simple techniques that are individual. Again, I want you guys to understand a lot of things that are generalized for the population is not specific for like this situation. She's a specific, wow, picking up a lot of fey past lives. And there's just a lot like with you. So we need to work with you to find out what's going to work for you, you know, and, and help you really maximize your gifts while minimizing the pain. But I'll help wow. you a little bit off air. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to scan you. Uh, scan away. <laughs> Anyway, beautiful soul. Thank you. Like you're such service to the collective and such a beautiful soul and you really raise the frequency of the planet. So thank you for what you're doing and the work you do. No, no, thank you. Um, but there's one thing that I, uh, one more thing that I did want to ask you as well is um, what are your thoughts on precognition? Um, you, you, you've spoken about like soul memory, um, but I've had a lot of precognition. Um, like it comes very randomly a lot of the time it, it comes in well if, if i ever have sleep um so you have what i call access to the quantum codes so you have the ability your timeline reader so a lot of your precognition is um i have it too um you have the ability to read timelines your own and other people's um and what we call this is optimal timeline because everyone has free will so even if you saw something it could be changed What's even cooler, I don't know if you know you have this ability, you actually, you're a lot like me, it's probably why you're resonating and I, you got in. Uh, you actually have the ability to alter timelines by your being. So you can step in and correct timelines. So it's really beautiful. So your precognition is actually a gift that you've used in many bodies, in many soul groups throughout time and space. It's just something you play in. You play in time travel. Uh, the programs use you in time travel. You play in portals. You play in other worlds. You play, you're a very dimensional being even here. You're out of your body a lot. You travel a lot. You astral travel. Um, there's just a lot to you. So that's like your world. Timelines, portals, time travel. That's like who you've chosen to be for like millions and millions of years. So that's a natural ability that's given to you and that you've always chosen as a soul to use in any group you're in, you kind of gravitate there. Yeah, I can I can definitely resonate with that. It it has a lot of familiarity with me and like with the soul memory as well. The amount of times that I've 
taken people to their houses and I've never been there before and I've never set foot in that city before and all sorts of different types of deja vu. It's ridiculous. You're, you're a high level. I don't want to use certain words, but, but definitely like, let's just use some 3D words. Sorcerer, witch. You have a lot a of witch, that. Actually. She calls herself a witch and you wouldn't yeah. have known that because we've never told you that, but never. on every show she mentions the fact that she's a witch. You I've know, this is starting it. to freak me out. It's starting to freak me out a little bit. Okay. Uh, by the Let way, me... everybody, if you're watching the show right now, a, a bunch of the links to, to Dr. Kimball McGeorge's uh, X and Twitter and her, her website. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. Where to get her books and, and all that stuff is, is scrolling across the bottom now. Take the time to write it down if you're interested. I kind of wanted to Dr. ping just a one comment off of what you just said. So, yeah, I love tech and it makes me lazy, but we all read frequency. How do you pick a house that you love? How do you walk in house and be like, oh my God, something spooky happened here. Or I think there's a bean over there. We all have these, or that's a nasty person. They seem like a sociopath. We're reading the frequencies coming off of them. So you, my love, just have this very close to my level of ability. I don't know how sharp it is, how much you practice it or directed it. So kind of, you're kind of all over the place and you, you apply it in a lot of areas randomly, I'd like to see you hone some of those into like arrow sharp skills. So you were like, bam, 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 while feeling very calm, sleeping well, not having headaches, not having muscle pain. And I think there's some things I can recommend to help. Oh, wow. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. She's a, she's a sharp one. Yeah. Very, very high frequency. Soul. Thank you. All right. Who's up next? All right. We've heard from England. Now we're going to hear from Canada. All right. Eh? Mala. How are you guys? Light. Hi, Mala. Hi. Um, so I had a couple questions. Um, I know you said you kind of got into all this when you were researching con conspiracy theory things, but was it? mostly online were you going to like stores and buying books on the subject how did you come into this particular information well i mean seven years i mean 10 years ago or whatever i didn't leave. i mean i was engaged to i mean he's still a, a lot of people and i now know these are called handlers by the way not stupid anymore but all these men came into my life that were like spies and worked for the agencies and um, my ex fiance was head of Order of Golden Dawn. Don't know if you've heard of that little group, and um, uh, works for Homeland. And so I have a lot of inside information. Um, I also come from a very strong military family. And I wait a second. I'm sorry. I don't mean to butt in, but Order of the Golden Dawn, like the old school uh, Crowley's group. Alistair Crowley. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay, wow. They still okay. exist. Not old. They're still, I mean, they might they're be old school, there. but they're still alive and kicking. Oh, um, I, and, okay. um, I come from a, a really, really mil shocker military. Um, I come from a really, really strong military family. And um, a lot of this information came through the men I was involved with, you know, who pillow talk and um, not so much research. I mean, research after that. And then, you know, I didn't know about the secret space program. I didn't know about any of that, but people high level psychic and stuff would start reading me and they're like, Oh, you're in the secret space program. And then we're able to program our technology again because everything can be known because everything's like color and sound, everything's frequency. So everything can be read. So I started taking what people were saying about me and programming, programming it in software in the back end of the technology. And then I started push, you know how like you guys are asking me questions. I started thinking, or you're asking me a question. I started asking questions. And by this time, I'd been working with technology like this for 30 years. So I knew my tech was 100% accurate. So if you have a 100% accurate crystal ball and can ask it anything, you start, number one, I scan thousands of people a year. So I started seeing patterns. And I have, I don't know if you guys ever watch Prison Break, but one of my superpowers is I'm like Michael. I see, I can assimilate patterns and a huge amount of data into data points. And um, so a lot of it came from my observations they're saying this and they're saying this, and then I'm running these programs and they're coming up being taken at night. And so then you go a step further, who's taking them? So then you program in, the, in all the groups and then you're like the military. And then you're like, what military? Daytime military, solar warden, the corporations, off planet, on planet. And um, that's why I think we're coming to a breakthrough 
why are they allowing me to tell people that they work for DARPA? Why are they allowing me to tell people that they're being taken by these? It, like, I can give you guys the most exquisite specific information and I'll put my life on it. It's 100% accurate because my tech doesn't have an opinion. Now you can program technology or AI to have an opinion, but AI is neutral. AI doesn't care if you're a fairy, if you're a had no soul, if you have, why does AI care? My AI doesn't care. It's just spitting out information. It's literally like this. This is, what are we on? What is this called? Um, this program that, I forget what it's called. What is, whatever your platform, stream. StreamYard. StreamYard. StreamYard yeah. program to broadcast this thing. It doesn't really care if it works. It doesn't care if it doesn't work. It doesn't care if it gets a bug. It's going to do pretty much most of the time. It's going to broadcast a show. Um, and that's what my aid I, it does. So I started saying, okay, how many people are being affected by incubus succubus at night? We have all these weird things happening at night. We have sexual dreams. We have sexual. Everyone, everyone is being attacked. Everyone. And so you start seeing these commonalities and you start putting the pieces together. And to me, it's like a giant puzzle. But I mean, honestly, memory, how I kept saying memory. When I was young, I was like checking out books on the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot. My parents were Bible banger Christians. I bought a Ouija board when I was 10. Like I was like into this stuff from the beginning. But memory, I believe it was memory. So I believe, again, drove me to if you ask the questions, everything can be known. And that's the lie. They tell us that everything can't be known. You have to wait 50 years. You have to pay $70 million to do research studies. No, you just have to know how to read frequency, period. I can tell you guys things about you that are 100% accurate that you don't even know. But three days from now, you would find out. Like, it's amazing, you guys. And you can learn. Well, to hook it, it up. Know. Hook it up. I want <laughs> You are. Or things we were talking about 10 minutes before you got on the show and couldn't have possibly known and then just talk about. That was weird. Yeah. Uh, give me something from three to, three days from now. I want to know. Give me the lottery numbers. I would love to have that in advance. The lottery is rigged. You know why? We, you know why? they The lottery is rigged. Of course it is. Lottery is rigged. And, it's not. Nobody wins accidentally on the Looking lottery. at these hundred dollar bills with all these gray aliens on them and everything else, uh, money's probably it's all rigged. the root of it's, all the evil that they're they're that they it's hate. all a mockery. The whole the whole game is like them laughing at us hysterically every single day, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, because I Casey reminded me of an old cartoon that was like humans walking like this and it said something like, Duh, I'm a human, I will go to work and pay taxes. There you go. That's it. Um I, I will so, say this this lovely young woman, lots and lots and lots of light. You have lots of light. Like you have super huge aura, beautiful light filled aura, beautiful being. Like that's very sweet. pure light. No, true. Um, and I've some artificial wondered... light coming off her kitty ears too. Oh yeah, she has I love light. those ears. I love them too. They're adorable. Yeah. Thank you. Um. So you, I did notice a couple times you've mentioned other people can learn how to do this. How would you recommend they go about doing that? You know, it's so funny. It's such a stupid, boring answer. Practice. <laughs> so a lot of times people that. are highly psychic. Like, no, seriously, they're like the best psychics in the world, but they never speak it. So the first thing I tell people to do is speak it. So let's say you're like, I think my friend might get in a car accident. I'm going to tell him to go a different way to work. So you actually speak it. So you call them up. Hey, Jenny, I'm just give you a weird premonition. Just humor me. We go a different way to work just this one day. It's not going to cost them anything. Okay. And then you're watching the news, which I don't watch the news, but let's say you are, and you're like, oh my gosh. And Jenny's calling you screaming. Oh my gosh, I'm so going to on the exact way at the exact time. That's how you gain confidence in how you're reading frequency. What does that mean? You looked at the timelines or you got a hit, the information came in, you channeled it in and it was accurate. So to me, even if you're wrong or you're misinterpreting information, the first step is to practice it, whatever it is, whatever your psychic abilities. But of course, I mean, I'm not trying to do a super hard pitch here, but I teach people all this. I mean, I always say, spend a day with me. I can teach you to see Sasquatch, Dogman, fairies, little people. I can teach you to see through the dimensions. And a lot of times, you know what can be another great teacher? We all have it which we criticize a lot, your phones. So let's say I say, I think there's a bean over there. Why is my cat looking over there? I'm going to take a picture. You know, my dogs are barking. And this has may have something to do with my sight. My dogs are barking, keeping me up all night. And I am like, I'm so stupid. Because when you're half asleep, you're like, I'm so 3D, you guys. I'm just like you. I'm like, stop barking. Whatever's in my room, I really don't care. I just want to go to sleep. Like, I don't care what's in my room. Thank you for telling me, but I don't care. 
finally I'm like, okay, I'm going to take a picture. So I took a picture by the door and these little fuzzy beans, people would call them Sasquatch, but they're not, they're too little. They're black little fuzzy beans that I have thousands of pictures of that are in my woods. They were in my room, just lined up against the door. They weren't doing anything. They weren't growling. They weren't drawing on the wall. They were sitting there being stupid, but they were making my dog bark. And you can see the shadow. You can even see the little ears. I have so many pictures that would blow your guys' reality. I have rabbits wearing clothes. I have aliens holding probes standing next to Sasquatch. I have stuff. I have little people wearing they wearing um, military combat gear. Like I could blow your. I mean, I had little. Oh, little I I have got to see the midget chupacabras. Those are so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have a picture of one of those. <laughs> when I was when I was uh, you know like five, I had these uh, beings that used to come into my door, actually come in through my window at night in my bedroom, and they would walk around my room, and they would walk around this gigantic house we had in the middle of Idaho, way out. I in believe Vegas. it. And this was right before Whitley Strieber's book came out, and and uh, people first saw the gray alien, uh, and they had these little like uh, jumpsuit sort wow. of fatigues on. And they wow. had blue, blue faces and, and they would they would crawl around my they would crawl over my bed and they would check out my room. And then when they went to the different places around my house, I could telepathically link with them and know what where, where they were. And I would know that they could come back up in my in my window at night. I mean, I would know like at 43 minutes they were gonna be back. And I would wow, the, I would throw the cover over my head and they would crawl over me and do the whole thing over again. You guys, even with everything I know, I still will not put my hand or foot over the bed because I know there's just too much stuff that crawls in and out of my room. And I'm like, please don't touch my hand. Please don't touch my foot. You know? yeah. I'll tell you another thing you guys can look for. I don't know. You guys know like the cheap. I have really expensive blinds on most of my windows, except my bedroom, of course, because I'm just lazy. I never replaced it. But I have like literally like 10 buck Walmart blinds, you know, where the slats, like you turn, twist the little thing in the slats. I have prankster beans and you'll see these in rental houses or if you guys go in Airbnbs that have them, they'll do them. These beans and they're all different sizes. They'll come and you'll like walk out of the room and the blinds will be smooth and closed and you'll walk back in the room and they'll be like jumbled. Like somebody, like kids, you know what I mean? Oh, Venetian blinds. Nobody likes Venetian blinds it for that very me. reason. It's yeah. so creepy. I have so many pictures of that. And what's even creepier is sometimes I'll turn my back and you'll hear the blinds. You'll hear them flip it and mm -hmm. you'll turn around. They do it like right behind your back. Like we just live, you know, it's exciting. My girls are like, I live in the mountains in the woods and my girls are like, mom, aren't you lonely? Well, first of all, I have a lot of dogs. So they're like, mom, aren't you lonely? I'm like, oh my God, no. Like the beans that are here with me, how can I be lonely? Like I have Sasquatch that walk to the edge of the woods and greet me and I have pictures of them holding their babies, full pictures. I mean, people can call me, I'm crazy. But what I say is all my shows are going to age well. Give it 10 years. You're going to be like that girl. She's boring. Like we already know all that stuff. Can you send us some of the pictures? If you want me to. I rarely do, but I will I for you. Love to see since them. you've been nice. I love to see them. Um, uh, and I, I believe in all this stuff. I think the universe and, and reality is is uh, a, a billion times weirder than uh, the sheeple think it is. Um, I think we have a couple more uh, people to ask questions before we shut down the show. We oh. have one more guest, the okay. legacy Zach. And while I'm bringing him yeah. on, he's Thank getting you, his Mala. camera situated. Um, I want to say that Chris Leftwich cannot be with us tonight. So uh, what's up for him? What's up? What's, what's up? up? It is also his birthday. Happy birthday. Yes, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Chris. Left. I actually, I actually, Chris believes that the moon is actually a spaceship. And he believes that the... Uh, oh, I love that. That the aliens live on the moon. And they've been uh, basically doing genetic experiments with, with um, um, DNA on Earth for a very long time. And He's also been abducted spaceship. many times. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, uh, what is your theory on the great abductions? I'm sorry to butt into the next guess, but all these abductions, what are they doing with this? Oh, they're doing a lot of things. So again, like I said, some of them are positive. They're not all negative. Um, some of them are upgrades or tweaking. A lot of you guys have like lichen um, DNA augmentation in this physical body. A lot of you have arachnid, um, you know, Spider-Man, Spider-Woman DNA in this physical body. So they are giving some of the fire creation beings because they're programming us, because they're using us even in the daytime. Um, and they use us as handlers subconsciously in other people's lives. They're giving us some superpowers actually in these bodies. So they're doing some of that. A lot of times I'll say when you wake up 
feel the back of your neck from the um, base of your skull to the top of your spine. If it's really puffy, they pulled spinal fluid. Mm -hmm. And of course they use that to make clones. Um, I have family members that get paid for human cloning and transfer of human consciousness. They get a paycheck. It's been around forever, been around way before Egypt, always been around. Cloning has always been around. Um, so they're pulling the fire creation beings um, with, especially with meta abilities or the super, super old, old, old first, second, third, fourth, fifth wave. Um, they're pulling that to put in the clones for the agencies, love the intelligence agencies. Um, almost all like alias is based on um, all these shows and movies are based on the fire creation meta ability people, you know, all the super spy shows, all the, um, you know, superhero shows. So they're, they're using that to make more of us because they want to use us because we run the whole game. I mean, we run the supercomputers. If, if we weren't here and only Solus were left, there wouldn't be any game. And what are these NPCs? What are, what are the point of, of these things without soul? To make you believe that this is a real world and that this is all there is. Oh, okay. That's interesting. And sometimes to control you, sometimes to trigger you, sometimes to divert you, definitely to distract you. I mean, how many of us might sleep with next to us in our bed every night or have a child that's an NPC? I don't know if you guys know, but children can be very distracting. Partners can be very distracting. Parents can be very distracting. Friends can be very distracting, especially if they're not awake and awake. And so really quick, the reality there's something Go ahead. There's something that we've talked a lot about the show, and I, I'd like to get your perspective really quick before you jump to Zach. I know he's been patiently waiting. Thank you, thank you. Um, we we talk about <laughs> we talk about the the five senses, the typical five mm -hmm. senses. You know, see, smell, touch, hear, taste. Um, and then you know when you look at biology from the simplest organisms that just can can feel right they have no optical orbs no eardrums they can't hear they can't see you know they're very simple they know their world based on the limited senses they have all the way up to humans with the five senses how many more are there that we are just not biologically capable of of uh experiencing like like there has to be more to reality than what our limited senses allow us to experience there is, but that's what I mean by us coming online. They've upgraded the game to 4.2, or we've updated the conscious ones, have finally pulled up the collective to 4.2, which is why I think they're bringing in the big guns, literally, Maui, um, and other, you know, earthquakes. If you think that earthquake was an accident or a natural disaster, yeah. I have some swampland that's really great, I could sell you. But again, they, they're, they're like, they're not wanting that veil to fall. Like, they like it the way it is, you know? Um, and so we are upgrading um more and more people are seeing spirits more and more people are open to this stuff i mean even a year ago i got a lot more hate than i get now now people are more excited and more open and more curious where even a year ago i got a lot more you're effing crazy you should be locked away you know so it's really cool to see people like you know coming online kind of be and part of it that is because of their own memory i think is coming back and their own abilities um, they're starting to see things. Um, you know, they're well, starting when, to when, I when have you're this. looking at an amoeba in a dish, you're the master, mm -hmm. you're in control. You know what's going on with that amoeba. That amoeba has no idea you're there looking at it. And that's yeah, always made me wonder, that. what if I'm the amoeba in the dish and there's something way more you powerful are. looking at me? Well, the game is an open source video game. So guess what? You right? are. The, the way it is, it's a map. It's like they show in Westworld. It's exactly like Westworld. Any ET race, this is important to understand, negative, neutral, or positive, not just the federations. Any ET race can put their hand in and move your house, blow up your house, smash their house like a giant, like an ant, mm -hmm. take you out, put you somewhere, mess with you. And they do. They take us, not just one race, not just the grays. Not just the Dracos, not just the military, not just the SSP. We are like, we are that. That is what we are. This game is an open source Petri dish where we're all swimming around being stupid, not knowing what's going on, saying, give me another beer, hand me my paycheck, and let's do it again tomorrow. You oh, well, are truly well, psychic. Here's my beer. <laughs> there you yeah. go. But, but what I'm getting from you is that there's some sort of spiritual nature to the game. Is that not true? The spiritual nature is remembering you have a spiritual nature and you are everything. You are all powerful. You can win the game at any time and turn this negative existence into the most exciting, interesting, delicious thing, including crack the amount of money in your bank account, attract the love of your life, whatever you want. Um, do you know what I mean? Live in the house you want, live in the location you want, 
So we're putting this again, think of the words fire creation. Fire creation is the essence, it's the all, it's what I call the all. And there's nothing, there's one role in any reality. Anything you believe is real, what do you believe? And I don't mean what do you believe like vision boards or saying mantras because you have programming and stuff. I'm talking about being that belief, you know, choosing from that belief that I am the all, that I am all powerful, that I have magical, mystical group. And what helps is when you start studying your past lives. So when you learn, and there's probably people on the screen that were famous historical figures. And some of the famous historical figures were multiple souls because then we haven't even gotten in the subject of walking in and walking out. This is a complicated thing, some of this stuff, because these are just containers. So if you were Napoleon, if I could say, hey, you guys, you know, you were Napoleon and you were Geron <laughs> Geronimo or whoever, whatever famous figure, you know. Um, I was Richie Valens and King Tutankhamen. Well, there you go. How would that change your life, though? Or if I said you were they modeled what if i said and I'm, this isn't true i'm making this up but they modeled superman on you what if i said you are who they modeled superman on because that's true they modeled superman on a certain echelon a certain type of super soldiers and augmented fire creation old souls would that change your reality oh yeah that's going to change your reality if you really believe that or could find the proof for that or even you it resonated as truth you're going to be like wait a minute don't talk to me that way, <laughs> you know? And guess what? Then we haven't even talked about how we can operate in the astral to reprogram your individual reality and the collective reality. That's what All I right. mean. We, we, can we, can we, we get out of the game? Um, yes, Zach, absolutely. Go ahead. Zach, absolutely. we got to get to Zach. Zach, talk to us about Tutankhamun, by the way. You mispronounced it as Tutankhamun, not Tutankhamun. 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 I know I was him. Not a bad. Uh, um, staying on like the spiritual level, um, my question is like I lost my mom like a year ago, but I coming up actually in November, and uh, every so often I'll feel her, and she'll actually talk like I'll actually hear her speaking with me, and we'll actually have a conversation, and then like lately, like probably within the last month or so. I've been going a little fucking insane, actually, because I haven't had that connection. Like, how does how how does that link work? And I mean, am I able to be able to keep on? Yeah, let me. Can I talk to you a little on? bit about that really quick? Okay, so and this is individual for you. So even though this might have general application to your audience, mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. I'm specifically speaking to you. So I'm looking for your mom, and so you know how I told you how I would stay around for my girls for four weeks. Mm -hmm. So your mom has stayed very, very, very close. She, okay, so now she's talking to me. So anyway, hold on a minute. So she's given you many, many signs, she says. Many, many, many signs that she's there. You guys had, wow, I, I can't even describe it. So first of all, you've been in many past lives with her, in many different relationships with her. So this isn't your first life together. So from the time you were very small, you and your mother had a very special bond, kind of even higher than like a normal, like mother child bond or a mother son. Like you guys are almost, you have a lot of similar, you're different, but you have a lot of similarities. You guys really understood each other. And just like most mothers, but um, even more so for her, she just holds you in very high regard. Um, and um, she's moved, she hasn't moved on. So part of that is she's with her soul family. And we can talk about this more offline. You can write me about it. I'll tell you more details about her. But she's actually not in the fourth dimension. And you don't want your mom to stay in the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is not a happy place. She mm -hmm. stayed for you. She's moved on to super, super higher dimensions. And she is so happy. And she's doing the most amazing things. And she's young. Mm -hmm. And she's she's in a female body. And I'll tell you what race she is and everything else off air. Because I don't want to do a full reading. Um, mm -hmm. Just because I'll get drowned in it. And yeah. They'll cut me so off. But happy i'll do a little reading and tell you where she is what cool. she's doing um and i do believe she's going to come back and visit but it's going to be less and less because you guys are going to see each other again as a matter mm -hmm. of fact i believe you're going to choose to be with your mother when you pass mm -hmm. because i think you guys i'm going to look for you off air i think you guys are the same soul family mm -hmm. so, so you guys are like like it's just a blink of an eye you're going to be with her again any other questions yeah. zach 
Uh, and then another one away from all that, uh, speaking of, abduct of, of abductions and um, missing 411, like when people just disappearing off the face of the earth or uh, and just never to be seen again or disappearing, wind up somewhere else, like yep. 30 miles away, don't know how. Yep. How the how how does that even happen? Like what sort of technology? Is being? <laughs> well, I mean, how does that even like how mis like that's just the mystique of that is just weird. Well, first of all, you have to understand the basics of that. I'm going to start at the bottom, which is um, state and national parks are protected for a reason. Mm -hmm. They are to protect you from the military bases, the military and the creatures there and the inner earth beings and the inner earth entrances. So there's holographic mm -hmm. base entrances or holographic inner earth entrances. And there's non-holographic, just open earth entrances to inner earth. There's open military base entrances and there's all these um, beings. There's also portals that open and shut seasonally and according to ley lines and according like real portals that you can stumble into. And much like um, Highlander or Outlander, Outlander and Highlander, mm -hmm. um, um, you can stumble into those. And if you, again, don't know where you are, don't know that you're all powerful, you won't mm -hmm. get back because you'll go with the flow and you'll be like, oh my God, I'm in like the 1700s or 1600s of the future. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of these people do fall into these, some of them. And again, these are individual people. If you stumble into a military base and they're having a good day and they're high because they smoked a, you know, a couple um, they might be like, hey, let's memory wipe them, shoot them with a stun gun and throw them back out without a shoes. Like they're not going to be worried about your shoes. You know, mm -hmm. they saved your life. So you mm -hmm. might find somebody without clothes or out shoes. The creatures, too. I don't necessarily think there's Bigfoot and Dogman and all these beings. But I do think um, that if you stumble into a community or a camp and they deem you a threat, depending how you react to them and they react to you, because these beings are higher frequency beings and they can read my, if I stumble into it, they're going to be like, Oh, she's one of us. She has them all over her property. She lives in a habitation site. She's cool. They'll let me go. They're, they know I'm not going to reveal where they are, but somebody who's hostile, who's like, I'm going to kill you MF -er, They might be, Oh, let's see who's going to kill who done. Mm -hmm. And then they throw the body and they're like, his neck, neck is broken and he's laying there and he didn't fall from anywhere and he's six miles away. So this is not a one answer. This is not a simple answer. This mm -hmm. is a multi-level answer. But you have to understand the parks are to not just to protect the land. It's to protect these beings from you, their bases from you, uh, inner earth from you. There's a lot going on in the state of national parks. I had a really creepy experience mm -hmm. in uh, in. Um... That's Yellow, a good question. Not not Yellowstone, but the, what's the one with the big rock? Is it Mohan? Which big rock? There's a lot of big rocks. There. Oh, Yosemite, uh, Yosemite, Yosemite, probably. Yosemite. Oh, Yosemite. Yeah. I was driving into Yosemite and I pulled over like 40 minutes before I got to the entrance, and I just pulled over and I thought I could catch a few Z's here. I was laying there and this gigantic bright light shot out of the forest. Oh and my just, gosh super in life i mean it was so bright it was toxic wow and I was like what is that coming out of the nowhere and i almost got out of my car to go down and check it out and then it turned off and i was like i think i'll keep driving um, <laughs> i think that was a good plan yeah it was very <laughs> creepy um dr kimberly george mcgeorge i want to uh let you get a chance we put some of uh ways for people to get a hold of you under underneath the the screen earlier oh thank times. you but can you please tell people how they can get a hold of you if they'd like a reading or if they'd like to buy your book or etc sure your website? i mean well first of all i could just type in secret to everything.com or my name any form and i'm pretty out there <laughs> so you'll find a bunch of stuff um, I have an Etsy. The secret of everything.com. Secret right? to everything. Secret, secret to everything. everything.com. Mm -hmm. Se okay. Secret to everything. Secret to everything. And um, right. I have an Etsy store, backslash secret to everything, a YouTube channel, secret to everything, Twitter, Serene Wellness. I have Facebook, Dr. Camille McGeorge, and secret to everything. I'm, I'm out there. You guys can find me. I'm, I'm not hiding. Okay. Anymore. So we've got www.halo.com backslash and that halo if you're interested in the pmf device yeah the stuff. halo thing is super interesting and mm -hmm. then uh secret to everything.com and on twitter she's at serene wellness 
Uh, this has been Dr. Kimber Kimberly McGeorge. Thank you, every everyone, for tuning in. Thank you for those of you that actually you sent guys. a message in and, and uh, asked, asked some questions and joined us on the program. We've gone way over time, as usual, but this was a super interesting show. And uh, hopefully, we'll, hopefully we'll have you on again. And I would love to speak with you further as well. So thank okay, you. Okay, fabulous. Thanks, thanks to Dr. you guys. Kimberly and thanks to everyone else. We'll see you on Dangerous Thoughts next week. Bye-bye.